Hello, and welcome to another Creative Coding video. Today we're going to be looking again at repetition and loops. We're going to be learning about a new way of using them, which will help us draw designs that we just couldn't do before. Now, before we um, start, it is worth reminding ourselves of how the repeat instruction works, and in particular, how using repeat with loop counters works. And we've done those in previous videos. So if you're a little bit fuzzy or need a reminder or a refresher, do go back because today we're going to build on that. They're quite important, those points. Um, so I'd recommend you really go back and have a look at those videos again, just so you're fresh on those ideas. Okay, so let's um, have a look at this um, design. Um, it seems to be a bunch of yellow circles drawn at regular spacing between each other. Let's look at it. So going across, they're at regular intervals and going down, they're at regular intervals. So it's a, it's a simple grid, but it's, um, it's quite a powerful sort of composition. How can we draw this? Well, the first thing I hope you're thinking is there's lots of repetition here, so we should be using the repeat instruction and the uh, and perhaps the loop counter as well because the loop counter helps us by keeping count of where we are when we draw something from say here all the way across canvas to here hmm let's uh, let's draw another picture to see if we can think more clearly about this so here we've got uh, a simpler picture with fewer circles, but they are still regularly placed across and down. So the first one here is at 100, 100, and then we go down by 200 for the next one, and down by 200 for the next one. So we could use um, a loop, you know, a repeat instruction with a counter starting at 100, going up in steps of 200, so 100, 300, 500. That would draw that line. That would kind of help, but does that help us with the rest? Hmm, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens if we draw the next row. So this time we're starting at 300 across and we're drawing the circle at 100 down, 300 down, 500 down. So that's the same. So we take a position and we can use a repeat instruction, a repetition, to count down the canvas, so 100, 300, 500. So the first one was 100, 300, 500. This one is 100, 300, 500. But this one starts at 300 across. If we look at the next one, you should see the same sort of thing happening. We're starting at 500 across. And then we're going down again, 100, 300, 500. So what have we learnt by breaking it down like this? Hmm. Let's, uh, let's see. So we had one here. We had one here. We had one here. And we went down like this. And down like this. The next one was at 300, and we did the same thing. And then we had 500, and then we did the same thing. And we can carry on up to 700 here. So we do the same thing. The reason I keep saying the phrase same thing is because each of these actions, this one here, this one here, and this one here, because they are the same, we can take advantage of that. So we can write code that does this thing here and this thing here, and this thing here. 
and this thing here. We can write code to do that. And we can see that each of these is shifted along a little bit. Hmm. Now, how can a repeat instruction help us here? Because a repeat instruction only counts from a starting point to an end point. So it might help us go down the canvas, or it might help us go across the canvas. But can it help us do all of those at the same time? Hmm. Because you can see going across, we're going at, uh, let me clear those arrows a little bit. You can see we're going from 100 to 300, 300 to 500, 500 to 700. So we're counting along that direction too, aren't we? As well as counting down. So we're counting in two directions. Okay, let's, let's rewind a little bit. That sounds a little bit kind of complicated. Let's write some code because coding can help us think. So I'm logged into open processing as usual, and I've, as usual, enabled the simple JS library. And I've got my simple setup. And here I've got a repeat instruction, which should be familiar from a previous video. Um, as I said, if you're not familiar, do go back and have a look. And what we're doing here is we're using a loop counter to count from 100 all the way up to 700 in steps of 100. And then we're calling our function spot and passing that count to it. And you can see here, we have the function spot. There it is. And it's accepting that counter. And we're drawing a circle at x along, 100 down, size 50. So none of this is new. We've done this before. So that's counting across, which is nice, but it's not the full grid. Now, if we wanted to do another row, what do we do? Can we call spot again? Well, we can't because that's going to always draw it 100 down. If we tried it, I mean, we could try it. We won't, uh, just to confirm, if we wanted to do a second row, it will go across again, but it won't be, they're drawn on top of each other, not, they're not drawn down. Do we need a second function called spot2, which is at a, let's copy and paste that. Let's call that spot2 and draw this at 200 down. That might work, so let's repeat just what we've done. We're calling a repeat instruction on spot. We should draw a row of circles at 100 from the top. And then we're doing it again and calling spot 2, which draws circles 200 down. That, that kind of draws a second, second row. But if we've got lots of rows, that's not really good either, is it? Hmm. Let's undo that. That wasn't very clever. Hmm, so we can go across, but can we go down? Let's flip these around. Let's change that function. So it's always 100 across, but then using the counter to go down. Let's try running that. Yeah, it goes down off the canvas, but it goes down. Can we combine both? Wouldn't it be nice if somehow we could have a function that could receive two counters like that, X and Y. We could have called them something else. X and Y. Now, that would be nice, wouldn't it, if we could somehow pass this function all the, um, all the kind of possible, all the combinations of X and Y on that grid. So counting across and then counting down. Is that possible? Hmm. So let's work backwards. What would repeat need to do? It would need to have two counters, not just one. So this is the information for one counter. Start at 100, go up to 700 in steps of 100. Let's see if we have 
and another one. So let's start a second counter from 100, going up to 500 in steps of 100. Calling spot. Now, will this work? It would be nice if it did. The answer is yes, um, because the repeat instruction can do this as well. It can have two counters and they are counted one inside the other. So what that means is when X is 100, it'll run all these. It'll run the second counter all the way from the start to the end. And then when this is 200, it'll run this all the way to the end. Let's run the code to see what happens. And we'll talk again about how that repetition works. Let's run it. Yep, that worked. Magic. <laughs> so we have a really nice, easy way of repeating code, but passing it two loop counters where one counts in one direction and another counts in another direction. But as you can see, it's not that one is counted from one starting point to the end and then another one is, is counted from one starting point to the end because then we just have one row and one column of circles. What seems to be happening is for every one across, there's a countdown. Let's uh, draw a picture to help understand that better. So we have a repeat instruction. And previously, well, let's just fill in the spot function. Spot. So we started a counter from 100 and ended at 700 and it went up in steps of 100. So we, we might we used it initially to draw a circle here and then here and then here and then here. Then here all the way up to 700. So the counter starts at 100 here, increases by 100, 200, 300, 400, all the way up to 700. That's why we had a row of circles. Now, let me draw that one back again. Now, what we want is another counter that goes down in the other direction. So we want to start at 100 and we want to go down to 500. So we say 100. In fact, why don't I use a different uh, color? Because that will help us see it better. So we start at 100 for the second counter. We want to go up to 500. And we're going up in steps of 100. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So let's work through what happens. When this counter, let's call it X, is 100. Let's call this counter Y. Let's write that down. Y will go from 100 all the way up to 500. So it will run the full loop. So when X is 100, the Y counter will go all the way from 100 all the way down to 500. And then when that's done, the first counter is increased to 200. And once that's there, the second counter is started again and run its full length. So that goes 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. You can see that we're starting to fill up the grid. 
Can you guess what happens next? Yep, so when the Y counter has gone and run its full distance from 100 to 500, we go back to the first counter, the X. Let's write Y here. So, so that goes up to 300. And once that's at 300, the second counter is run again from 100 to 500. So we go plop, 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 plop. And then when that, when that um, counter is done, we're back to X again, which increases to 400. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> the Y counter is run again from 100 to 500. So you can see how we can continue this process and fill up the entire canvas with a regular grid of spots. So the important point here is the two counters are not run individually. What happens is with the first counter, in this case we've called it X, for every one of its values, the second counter is run the full distance from start to finish. I hope that kind of picture makes it uh, clear how this works. Um, it's a concept that some people do find hard to kind of understand straight away. Don't worry about it. We can, you know, the best thing to do is to experiment and play. That's the best way of learning it. Not, not really me talking at you. Um, experimenting and playing will help the idea sink in because you'll see how it works. Um, but it's a really important idea. So worth sticking with. Um, let's go back to our code. Um, and try some changes to understand how this thing works a bit better. So what happens if we run the second counter, not up to 500, but only up to 200? Let's run the code to see what happens. So now we have two rows because the first counter goes across and the second counter has a short distance 100, 200. Can you see? Let's go back up to 500. What if the first counter only went up to 400? Let's see the effect. Yep, so horizontally, it only goes 1, 2, 3, 400. Can you start to see how that might work? So we can draw a square. We can say, I'm um, going from 200 to let's say 600 and this one also this one going from say 1 to 500 does that give us a square yep that's a square so that's nice um we can do interesting things like make the step smaller we've done that before and it works works with these kinds of loops as well by the way these are called nested loops You'll have seen why that is, because for every one count, for every one of these, of the first counter, the other counter is run fully, so it's nested inside the first counter. So we're going to make this one go up in 50 and that one go up in 50. There you go. So the circles are much closer together in both directions. If we only wanted it to take smaller steps along but not down, we can just change the second counter step size to 100. There you go. So you can start to see how you can have some interesting uh, designs from this. And it's a really neat way of covering a space with a grid. Um, and it's often a starting point for many other interesting designs. Um, what can we do? Well, let's, let's color those circles. Let's go into HSP mode, which we've used before. It's much easier to kind of pick out colors. And I'm going to maybe pick out. So remember HSP's hue, saturation, and brightness. And the, the H, the hue, goes from 0 to 360. So maybe I'll have a combination 
of the X and the Y counters. But remember, they can go above 360. So maybe if I half it and then so those numbers are in the hundreds, aren't they? And maybe I'll do a percent 360, which means it wraps around 360 again if it grows bigger. We've seen that before, but um, if you need a reminder, definitely go back and uh, have a look at those again. So I'm going to use a fill instruction with that hue. Maybe half the saturation, full brightness. Let's see what happens. So we're creating a hue, a color in effect, that depends on the X and Y position or the, you know, the counters. Let's see what effect that has. Ooh, <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah, I like that. Very rainbow-like. Because the saturation was turned down, they're more pastel-y. But as you can see, again, if you look at the code, what have we got? We've got a little bit of code to pick the color and a repeat instruction, which is still one line of code. And with just that, we've managed to cover a canvas with a grid of interestingly colored circles. I mean, we can make things more complicated. We can draw other things uh, as part of our function. But that's, that's, a, that's a really powerful but simple example. There you go. Nice. That's really cool. Okay, I'll um, stop there. Um, so this was our first introduction to using nested loops, loops within loops. Um, and because it's a new idea, it might take a few attempts to get it. So I really recommend you have a go yourselves. Um, most people don't understand this simply by reading about it in a book or, uh, or hearing about it. What they do is they experiment and play and by experimenting and playing and seeing the effect of your code changes, that's really the best way of developing a feeling for how this works. I will draw another picture just to show why it's called a nested loop. So we have two counters. We have one counter, which is counting from a starting position to an end position and it goes up in steps, regular steps. So that's what we have been doing before today's session. We've been using repetition to keep a count and that goes from a starting position to an end position in regular steps. Now what we're doing now, if I change color, is that for each of these positions that the counter lands in, you know, this might be 100, this might be 200, 300, 400, 500. For each of those, a second loop is started, an entirely separate loop, which goes from start to finish itself. So for this one, we'll have start position, and it'll count to its end. So from Wherever it starts from, increases in steps to its end. So that, this thing here, is a loop in itself. So I said that would happen for every one of these positions for the first counter. So for the second one, you'll do that again. And when that's done, You'll do it again for the third one. See? So each of these positions that the first counter ends up as, at, at each position, a second counter is run from start to finish, which is an entire loop itself. So that's why it's called a loop within a loop a nested loop. So that's where the phrase comes from, nested loop, loop within loop. Anyway, I've uh, talked a lot there. Um, I'll stop there. What we'll do in the next video is um, use a different example 
um, with this nested loop idea, we'll we'll create a different design, um, and we'll practice um, this nested loop um, new idea that we've come across. But I hope you can see it's quite powerful. It allows us to fill a whole surface really easily, um, and then do interesting things with that. Okay, have fun, um, and we'll be back on this topic again later. Cheers. Bye.